Your headlines this week. Family set to welcome troubled son back into their lives. Photography exhibition ends in drama. And flames ignited with ex-partners sure to cause trouble. Hello, this is Coastal News, an unofficial home and away podcast where we dissect the latest week's episodes and discuss the happenings and residents of our favourite fictional town, Summer Bay. We kick-started uh, this week with um, Bella attempting some peace with Chloe, actually. Um, you know, sort of, tr- I think I think because she's friends with Ryder, I think she's, she, you know, she's back in town and I think she knows if she wants to hang around with Ryder, Chloe sort of comes as a package deal these days, much to my dismay, I must be honest. And I've said that before, as listeners will know. Um, I'm not Chloe's biggest fan. Um, and that was, again... Uh, cemented this week when, um, you know, Chloe just became even more entitled, um, still having a go at Bella. Um, and I, and really, I've said this, it is none of her business what goes on between Nick and Bella. And I just think she should put out of it and concentrate on her own relationship and her own life, if I'm being completely honest. So really not her fan. And then she has this whole... I'm too good for the diner when um, Maz asks her for a CV and she thinks, you know, the diner's beneath her. And and, and, and good on Ari because he does say to her, you know, do you know what, it's just a CV. A lot of us don't have the luxury of even having a CV. So in other words, pull your socks up. And I mean, she comes around in the end and hands a CV in, but, um, you know, her, her entitlement, like I say, thinking that she... Doesn't she could walk a job in the diner and and doesn't need to provide anything else and go through any of the loops? Just really, really wound me up, and I know it did others as well. Um, so, you know, I, I said this in the week. We're long overdue a shark attack, aren't we? Chloe, love, fancy a swim in a sea of jellyfish or something? I don't know. I'm just, just not. I think, I think I'm past it with her now, and I don't think there's any going back for me with with Chloe. Um, and I'm not interested, you know, I think actually she'd be a great fit at the diner. I think, she, you know, she's, she talks about being this big entrepreneur and, you know, I, I ran, ran a food truck. You were making women tacos, do you know what I mean? Um, some people just need to be brought a little bit back down to earth. And, and sort of interweave with those scenes um, was it Matt looking great, you know. She's she's really she's really looks like she's turned a corner definitely now, and moving back into the apartment. Fabulous scenes of her and Dean um, getting along so so well, um, and I'm really really gutted because obviously she learns that Emmett has this job opportunity in New York and he's going to take it, but um, against her advice, won't tell Bella that he's going not yet anyway and and um yeah I, I, i'm a bit gutty because mac and emma as you know i think would make a, a great couple if emma was to stick about maybe he might not go who knows but i think it's you know he came along didn't he with all the all the fashion stuff and the fashion guys so they've now gone it's i think it's a bit of a given that he's a temporary character so he's not going to be sticking around but i would have liked to have seen a bit of development with him and him and Mackenzie, and I thought they had great chemistry. I mean, what do you think? You know, Mac Mac could do with a nice, nice grounded relationship, I think. And I think Emmett was a was a decent guy for her. Okay, need need to talk about this. I'm really quite emotional and pumped up about this. So, Alf and Martha are back. Okay, Martha is not happy. She's learned that Kieran is back, that Rue has been <laughs> has been harbouring him in the bay, um, as well as Irene and Jasmine. Um and I think, you know, um I'm finding Alpha Martha's reaction completely unrealistic, unbearable, and out of order, if I'm being completely honest. Now I do have to empathise a little bit with Martha. He put her through the ringer when he was last in town, wasn't he? Um, but it's not like it's just some rando that 
kidnapped you and all the rest of it, and uh, you know, caused all this trouble and you know, and wound you up in hospital and and all that. I'm not di diminishing any of that, but it is your son and it is a family. And I mentioned this on last week's episode. Alf didn't refer to Kieran as family despite marrying his mother. Um, and you know, and and it's really bothering me actually that this is Alf's attitude towards Kieran when actually given the Stuart family history and all the trouble, I mean, Rue is no saint, Duncan was no saint, you know, when he was going through tough times in his childhood, he's got no room to talk and actually Summer Bay House, the Stuarts, they've got this legacy of bringing in people who need help and they need a bit of guidance and I'm just finding it completely out of character for Alf to be you know, really judgmental. Okay, he's an old git and, he, and he's a very stubborn one, but I just don't like it. And I'm struggling with words because actually I'm so wound up about it. Pot, kettle, black is what comes to mind. They're the three words, actually. Pot, kettle and black. Um, You know, Alf's, we found out Alf's a bigamist, kept secrets all his life. Martha's faked her own death and stayed away from her own children all these years, or Rue, should I say, stayed away from Rue at least all these years. I mean, really? Have you got any room to talk? Um, you know, and and then of course there's this really bad mis things escalate because there's this really bad misunderstanding between Kieran and Jasmine, and I am loving, loving their friendship actually that seems to have formed out of an unlikely scenario of Kieran being sort of imposed on Jasmine at Irene's house, um, and that they ended up becoming really good friends, and I was really enjoying watching them be friends, but of course. Um, men being men, <laughs> he plans to plant. He plants some blooming kiss on Jasmine, and you know, a bit of a misunderstanding, and it just sort of escalates the situation. Jasmine ends up fitting, and I've, I'd actually forgotten about Jasmine's diagnosis of epilepsy actually the other week because she was just back to normal and running around the bay again. Um, and of course, Alf jumps to conclusion. What an absolute pillock! You know, you can clearly see it. Jasmine is having a fit. Like, and all you can worry about is having a go at Kieran. I was absolutely screaming at the telly on, on that episode. I'm really, really disappointed in Alf. Really disappointed. Um, please let me know what you think. Um, but it's not, it's not the, the Alf, the Stuart family that we we come to we've come to expect over the years um and, and i do feel sorry for rue for all of this because rue is the only one that sees things for what they are and how they really are and she's having to fight this uphill battle constantly um after it gets proven that um you know kieran didn't attack jasmine she was just having a fit and he was actually trying to help him martha comes round and invites him back to the house and i think why does it take something like that for you to give your son a second chance you said yourself you know everyone deserves a second chance but why does it take something like that to happen for you to allow somebody to to have that chance i'm just really annoyed really really annoyed about it um as you can tell as you can tell, I'll get over it. It is, it is only a TV show. Um, but yeah, poor Rue, she's, she's she's been through the ringer with all this. And I, do you know what? One of my favourite scenes through all this, and I think it's one of the forgotten ones, is when Cash actually is in the diner when, when Alf's there and he gives him a few, he, you know, he gives him a few words of wisdom that might have actually made him come, you know, see, see a bit of sense. Uh, and he says, I'm speaking from experience here, you know. Um, you know, everyone deserves that chance, or whatever he said. And I think Alf you sort of had that look on Alf's face, didn't he? Where you know, gosh, even the police, even he, young fellas telling me I'm being a bit unreasonable. Um, did that have some influence? I don't know. But also, it's quite telling now. There's been a couple of occasions with Cash where he has mentioned. Has he got some experience? We, we need to learn a bit more about him, don't we? But has he got some experience about addiction or something? Because there's that comment. Speaking from experience, quite a, quite a pl you know plain you know way of expressing that is quite clear that that yeah, I'm speaking from experience, quite lateral, literal, sorry. Um, but then it uh, rewind a few weeks when Justin was in custody for the murder of Susie, and there were, that investigation was ongoing. He was really good with him, and and 
you could tell then there was some empathy towards Justin's addiction situation. He allowed Tori in to help him with his meds and things. And, you know, he, he understood the situation a lot. And I'm really loving Cash and the way he's able to just slot into small town life. And he understands the community a lot. I said this last week when he let Leah off the hook with the money. You know, I think he gets what makes a small community like some of a tick and how to how to slot into that and he's doing really well. I think we've got some learnings to come about him and his past and I think on the face of it there's going to be some addiction in there, some alcoholism, something. He's either been through it himself or he's had experience and I'm and I'm looking forward to hearing about about him more. <laughs> And Bella's expedition, um, exhibition has arrived um, and Neek, unfortunately, is hell-bent on going. It won't take anything else for an answer other than you can come. Bella doesn't want him there. She can't even stand the sight of him, can she? And it's bad enough that the exhibition is full of his face <laughs> and the rest. Um, but yeah, he's hell-bent on going and Tane sort of takes him aside, doesn't he? And he sort of Let's tells him get punch in that punching bag and get it all out of your system and he sneaks off to the city to basically ruin the exhibition. He turns up. He's not even had a drink. It would have I think that would have been a bit more realistic if he'd had a drink and just turned up and but I think it's just pure teenage angst that's maybe overcome him, I don't know. Um but really gets up on stage, makes an absolute scene. <laughs> Mate, basically bends him at like he snaps him like a twig. Um, so one way of making sure that you've ruined your chances of any reconciliation with Bella, I think, I don't think she's going to be interested in hearing what he's got to say after this. Not that she did anyway, so he's going to make it even worse. Um, and why, ju ju you know, just why he's not thinking right is he's just being consumed by this guilt and this um, sadness, really, that... He's ruined everything with Bella. It is, I think, for me, I do look at Nick and I think it is it is internal. He's internalising it all. He's blaming himself and he's mad with himself and it's making him act this way. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I think he might have... I think he might have ruined things there, if I'm being honest. We'll so sure we'll find out next week if he has or not. Um, but yeah, he... Doesn't listen to Tane's, and Tane's not at the exhibition, obviously. He's there looking after Neek because Neek's acting out. He should have gone with Dean and Ziggy. We need to discuss this, don't we? I'm also really upset and really angry at Ziggy. Miss, dead against cheating. Miss, have really been awful and really give Tane a really bad time about it, about supporting Neek and all the rest of it. Then goes and blooming kisses Dean and that wasn't just any kiss that was like going for it in a back alley do you know what I mean like it didn't just sort of happen in the heat of the moment too much carver and she, she pulled away and was like this is wrong they were passion away they were tonsil tennis going for it um and it was actually Dean that put a stop to it and, I, and I'm really really disappointed because Ziggy's on her eye horse constantly about what happened with Brody you know, about what Bella and Nika's, what's happened between them two. And then she literally does this really out of character, I actually feel. Another thing the writers have sort of come left field at, um, you know, OK, fair enough. If Dean is supposed to be her, you know, her her Mr. Big, shall we say, you know, she's, she's supposed to make her way back to Dean at some point. I can understand that. That's how these things go. And I'm happy to, to go along with that, but not in this way where um, she is... Um, changing herself and everything she she's really strongly believes in she's a real big advocate for this sort of stuff after everything that she's gone through the experiences that have happened with her and Brody and, and the breakdown of that marriage so then do this so and I think I, I said this yesterday it would have been a, 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 a bit of a better pill to swallow if Tane was still a bit of an idiot you know um, but he's not he's a really genuine guy and he's really sort of come a long way and, and, and I think from a lot of us who watch, Tane's become a real nice character and we all sort of root for him and he's a really he's, he's been nothing but such a gentleman with Ziggy. You know, why why would you do that to him? How can you do that to him? And I think um that's what makes this whole thing a lot worse, in my opinion. Um 
and um, yeah, she's really come down in my estimations. Let's see if she calls back to the bay and tells him straight away. I have a feeling that's not the way it's going because as Nika arrives to to <laughs> to have it out with Bella and try and God knows what he thought he was doing, he clocks them doing this horrible. Oh, it's making my skin crawl. This weird kissy thing. Um. He sees him, doesn't he? So it's going to come out in, like, the worst way possible. You know, Nick's going to tell Tane, I can see it. And Nick's not in the right very mind to say things in a in a very um, diplomatic way, is he, at the minute. So um, I'm really, I'm, I actually really, I'm gutted for Tane. I really am. And he deserves a lot better. And I'm no longer, I'm no longer rooting for Diggy. I'm saying it now. I'm declaring it now. Diggy. I'm not. I'm not having it. I'm not having Tori and either. I'm over that merry go round as well. I'm not even talking about that this week. I told myself I wasn't gonna. <laughs> but yeah, there's two big power couples. I'm just not feeling. I'm just not feeling them. That's all I've got time for this week. Uh, thanks for listening. Appreciate your support as always. Do um, sort of like, subscribe, follow, whatever you need to do to be notified of future episodes. Um, episodes every weekend. Um, unpacking the latest episodes of Home and Away on Channel 5. Until next week, I will see you then. Enjoy your week. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.